Hey guys, in this video, I'm gonna be showing you how to fix your mindset leaks. Hey guys, it's Poker Mindset Performance Coach Adam Comet here. In today's video, I'm gonna be showing you how you can identify your mindset leaks, but most importantly, how to fix them. Now, I did a previous video for you guys showing you the most common mindset leaks. I'll put a link to it above this video, so you can click on that and look at some of the most common leaks that might have crept into your mindset. Now, in today's video, I'm gonna walk through a process for how to fix them. Because I see a lot of players, they have leaks, they have ways of thinking that aren't helping them, but they don't know what to do with them. They get stuck and they end up making the same mistakes over and over and over again and not actually fixing their problems. So today I'm gonna walk you through an exercise, exactly how to identify your mindset leaks, but most importantly, how to fix them, how to reframe them and turn mindset leaks into actual strengths. So let's go into uh, uh, the exercise and I can teach you exactly how to do that right now. All right, guys, I'm gonna walk you through a two-phase process to first off, identify your mindset leaks, but most importantly, how to reframe them and fix them. I think that a lot of players are good at seeing their problems, but they haven't got a process to go through in order to fix their mindset leaks so that they don't happen again. And as a result, the same things happen over and over, and they don't actually get to the bottom or the root cause of their mindset leaks. So today, hopefully after today's video, you'll have a clear way of dealing with your mindset leaks in a process to go through. So let's dive in. This first bit is assessing your thinking and what actually happens um, due to mindset leaks. So we've got, the first thing is the situation slash events. What happens when and where? Before we start to fix a problem, we need to identify it. So uh, let's use the example of the situation is, uh, I had a few bad beats on Poker Stars and I tilted off at the end of my session. So I tilted off at the end of the session, what happens? That's, that's what happens. When was it? It was on Friday evening on Poker Stars. So you've had a, a tilting episode that happened on Poker Stars on Friday. We've got the situation. Okay, cool, next step. What were your thoughts? What were my thoughts that led to that feeling? So uh, you, uh, what went through your head at the time? So you might be thinking stuff like, nothing I'm doing is working. Why am I losing to such bad opponents? I'm better than these guys, why do I have to lose? I always get unlucky. So these are some of the thoughts this player would be having that have led them to tilt. So we've identified the thoughts. So here you write down your thoughts. And then finally, the outcome. What was your feeling, emotion, and what did you do? So what, what happened as a result? So this player felt like nothing was working and as a result, got frustrated. That frustration led them to start being overly aggressive. They started tilting, they started trying to force the action. Also, as a byproduct, they felt really pissed off at the end of their session and they didn't want to grind the following day. So what we've done here is we've got the situation, the thoughts, and the outcome. We've just put a magnifying glass on it. What actually happens uh, in that situation? Once we've got that clear, we can now start to see some of the flaws in our thinking and try to change them and eradicate them for the better. So let's flip it over and go to phase two, which is correcting our thinking errors. All right, so now guys, we're going to learn how to correct our thinking flaws. So I did a previous video on all the different flaws of thinking we can have as poker players. I'll put the link around this video somewhere to click on, but I'm gonna just describe some thinking errors and I'll give a, an example or an explanation of what they are just for anyone who didn't watch that video. So a thinking error, list of thinking errors I made. So one error this person made is their demand making. So demand making is when you want your opponents to act how you, you think they should. You want the environment, your results, to come good because you think they should. So you're, you're creating a situation where you're putting your demands on the environment and that's leading this player to be frustrated. So the demand making side of it was when they said, I, my opponents are worse than me, they don't deserve to win. That's demand making, you can't make that demand. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll go into the corrections after that and then the outcomes, but first of all, we're gonna get all the errors in place. The first one, demand making. Second one this player is doing is all or nothing thinking. So all or nothing thinking is when, if I win, things are good. If I lose, things are really bad. So results were going bad, but rather than focusing on the positives, they decided to uh, say, life's bad, and then they end up tilting because they're angry that the results weren't going good. And I'll, I'll show you how to correct this later. A third error they made in their thinking was disqualifying the positive. This kind of links into the all or nothing thinking where they were just only focusing on everything that was going bad. They disqualified the positive. They could have been playing great. They could have been, uh, yeah, there could be lots of good things in the session, but instead they got so angry that they weren't winning and they did disqualify all the good things that could have been happening during the session. And then the final one is overgeneralizing. They were overgeneralizing. They said in the example I used, 
They said, I always get unlucky. I always get unlucky. Why me again? And they go into victim mentality. When you overgeneralize, your mind remembers all the examples of times you've got unlucky, all the times that you've lost, and you end up creating this narrative that I'm an unlucky person. In reality, it's not true. It's just the overgeneralization. So we've, we've got here, we've got all the errors of their thinking that have occurred, and we're in a great place now. We, we know the problem, and we know what went wrong. Now, we need to start thinking, all right, is there a better way to think about this? Like, this is how you're currently thinking. Can I change them? And the answer is yes. So now we need to think of uh, thinking corrections for each of them. So the first one was demand making. How do you change demand making? You've got to realize that you can want something. So when you sit down to play poker, you want to win, but it's only a preference. You prefer to win. If you don't win, you've got to be able to accept that as a poker player, you can lose every time you play. And you've got to take that on board. And instead of demanding that your opponents play a certain way that you win, you've got to go, okay, I'm gonna do everything I can to win, but I only prefer to win. I, I can accept the fact that I might not. So changing that narrative of heaven to win into I'm gonna try my best to win. And that's a massive, massive perspective. The next one I used was all or nothing thinking. So this is when you basically go, if I win, life's good. If I lose, life's bad. How do you correct that thinking? What's an alternative way to think about that? You can start to look for the middle ground. So rather than all good, all bad, it's, there's a middle ground where things are often, there's lots of positives to be taken. So you might say, uh, I play great up until the end of my session when I start to get rid of bad, and then I start to tilt. Before I tilted, for 70% of the session, I'm really happy with how I played. Even though I was losing, I'm happy with how I played. So that's create a great area where you actually start to see positives in that scenario. The next one was disqualifying in the positive. So again, you're gonna feed, you're gonna expand on this all or nothing thinking and you're gonna remind yourself, you know what, I play pretty good. And if I continue to play like this, I'm gonna make money over the long run. The only downside was, I tilt at the end of my session. I need to fix the tilting part, but at the start of the session, when things when I, when I was losing, I'm actually happy with how I played. And as a result, I'm actually gonna play tomorrow as well because I'm not scared to play because I'm happy with my results. So start to remind yourself of all the positives you can take from that session. And the fourth one was that you were overgeneralizing. I'm always unlucky, an unlucky person. So you remind yourself, I'm not an unlucky person. Like, I don't always get unlucky. Remind yourself of all the sessions you've won, all the sessions you've hit two outers, all the times you've been the lucky guy. Just remind yourself of those. Go, yeah, actually, maybe I've been running bad this week or even this month, but overall, like, I have, I'm just, I just run normal, or I don't get too unlucky. Even if you were slightly unlucky, don't overgeneralize. So now we've got alternative ways of thinking. So we've got, okay, we, these were the errors, and we've changed them to these better ways. Now, if you're able to act on those, what would be different? So what would be the new outcomes? How do you feel and act differently now you've corrected your thinking? So I'll go through them. So demand making, you've now said that instead of demand that you win, you prefer to win and you can do everything you can. If you did that, how would you feel? You'd accept when you lost. If you lost, you'd be like, okay, I lost today, that's poker, I, I can deal with it. I'm not happy with it, I'm still frustrated, I'm still annoyed that I lost, but I'm not gonna tilt and spirit buy-ins because I accept that as part of poker. Next one, all or nothing thinking. Your new way of thinking is, there's lots of good that I can take from the situation, and the result is, you, the new outcome of how you think and feel, you'll be like, oh, I played good for the most part, I'm happy with how I played my session, and I'm still confident in my game. Disqualifying the positive. You, you now said that, okay, there was a lot of good to be taken, I did play well for most of my session, uh, even though I lost, I still improved as a player, I learned a lot about my game, and as a result, new outcome, I'm gonna to play tomorrow, I'm not gonna hide away from it, I'm not gonna shy away from the emotional feelings, and I feel like I won't tilt next time in this situation. So you've learned from it, you've learned to see some positives, and even though you, you blew up and tilted, you know, put yourself in that situation again, you feel more equipped to handle it. And then finally, the overgeneralizing, your correction was, come on, I don't I always get unlucky, I was exaggerating, I just call myself an unlucky person, and as a result, I feel like I'm gonna play tomorrow, and I could easily win, I'm not, I'm not playing the victim card, and I could easily get myself in the right mindset. So this is how you go for a process of, first of identifying your mindset leaks, and then correcting them, and go for a process of actually thinking about what needs to change in order for your, you to be able to be in the same situation and deal from it. So when you go for this process, the main thing is, if I was in that situation again, would I be able to handle it better next time?
Now, when it comes to fixing your mindset leaks, you need to do more than just watch a video of this nature. You actually need to go through the process yourself and map out your mindset leaks, what's going wrong, and how to fix them and correct them. So to help you with that, guys, I've created a free training exercise for you below. If you just click on the link below. You can download the free worksheets, which are gonna walk you through the exact process on how to identify your uh, mental leaks, and most importantly, how to fix them. So just click on the link below in the description and put your email and I'll send you through the worksheet so you can actually spend some time on fixing your mindset leaks. Now one of the most common things I see football players do is have the same leaks over and over again. Months go by and they don't fix them because they don't put the work in to actually uh, fix those problems. So I want you guys to go a step further, dig a bit deeper and actually eradicate some of your mindset leaks. So Get, take advantage, click on the link below, get the free exercise, work your way through the problems. And that's really going to help you to take your mindset to the next level. So thanks for watching this, guys. Hope you got a lot of value from it. And make sure you hit the like button, subscribe, and plenty more coming from me very soon.